Hey y'all, this is Jeremy Goad, and we're going to go over simple supply and demand today for our economics class. Uh, supply and demand, you can see here on these curves, the supply curve is represented by the blue line. Supply has to do with producers, how much uh, of a good, um, maybe it's uh, land, maybe it's labor, maybe it's capital, uh, that producers are willing to produce at a certain price. And demand is, is green, um, and that is how much uh, demand there is for a certain good at a certain price. So we have price on our uh, vertical axis and quantity on our horizontal axis. Now let's look at um, our first market price. Let's call it $66, and you can see two points here. The first point you see is on our demand curve at $66. Uh, consumers are willing to consume or purchase. They're demanding 100 units of whatever good it, that is. Okay. Uh, then our second point, we see at $66 that producers are willing to supply 200 of whatever that good is. And they're they're willing to make 200 of a certain good or at least 200 of a certain good. Let's say for our purposes today, we're talking about Xbox 360 games. Okay. So at market price one. Um, we have uh, consumers uh, at, at $66 would like to be able to consume or purchase three, uh, 100 Xbox 360 games. Uh, producers at $66 would be willing to produce 200 Xbox 360 games. All right, here's a problem. We have a production of 200 games, but only demand for 100. That leaves us what we call a surplus. That is the point here in between the two curves uh, that is um, left. This is basically inventory sitting on the shelves, if you will, collecting dust, not doing anybody any good. Um, obviously, this is a good that the, the producers have made that they're, they're not being able to sell, and that's bad. So what do they do? Well, producers here would lower the price. It's done in a mutual determination fashion, meaning that they're seeing that consumers are not willing to buy, but they lower the price until they are willing to buy. And that brings us to a point we call equilibrium. Here at market price $50, if that price was lowered, uh, you'd see that producers are willing to uh, make 150 Xbox 360 games. Consumers are willing to buy uh, 150 Xbox 360 games at, at $50. And that brings us to a state of equilibrium, and that gets rid of the surplus. Okay, let's talk about another market price. Market price two, we see at $33 uh, that, first of all, suppliers are only willing to make 100 units of a certain Xbox 360 game. Uh, they're, just, they're not interested in making a whole ton of them because there's no profit incentive. Uh, it's not selling for very much, and therefore they don't want to make too much of that one good. Whereas we see more demand at $33, consumers are demanding or they're, they're willing to buy, they're willing to consume, what have you. Um, here, uh, 200 units. Now here we have a problem. We see that uh, consumers are willing to buy 200 and producers are only able to produce or only willing to produce 100. That leaves us what we call there a shortage. Again, the distance between the two lines here, 100 unit. <coughs> Excuse me. So, what do, what do we do to fix that? Well, the mutual determination is made, right? Uh, they would be, the, the, the consumers would will be willing to buy less at a higher price. The producers would be willing to create more at a certain price. So, if we raise the price to an equilibrium, then we see again, at $50, they're, they're willing to buy <clears throat> 150 units of a certain Xbox 360 game. So, all that to say that there is incentive for producers to produce more at higher prices, but higher prices also drive demand from the consumers low. Um, when the price is lowered, there is less incentive for producers to produce, and when the price is lowered, there is more demand for a certain good. Well, that's about it for today, I guess. 
Uh, I hope this makes supply and demand a little bit easier. It's a very, very simple introduction. There's a lot of contingencies, like um, the fact that market prices must be able to to change. Prices must be able to change. There must not be caps or those sorts of things, which we'll talk about price controls uh, in a later lesson. All right. Have a good one.